real easy, man. What's good with y'all? You feel me? Um, I'm about to motherfucking bite back, bro. This whole Miami shit, bro. This is not a good look, bro. I think this is bad, especially for a team that's in first place. You would think that going into the playoffs. See, the this, this season is already long as it is, right? You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have some some days and some weeks will where um, you lose to teams you shouldn't lose to. You're going to have accumulate injuries. You know what I'm saying? It, it, the frustrations, you know what I'm saying, might boil over. And that's exactly what we've seen with frustrations have boiled over. But the Heat are still in first place. Why are they going at each other's necks? See, you should be more focused on winning <clears throat> and making the minor little corrections rather than going at each other's neck over some stupid shit, over some leadership or whatever, whatever. Like, you feel what I'm saying? And the teams who normally do that and have that type of dysfunction. See, back in the day, Portland Trailblazers were... Um, were pretty dysfunctional. But Portland Trailblazers was back in them times was one of the best teams in the NBA, especially the Western Conference. But they had problems amongst each other in the locker room and shit like that. Like, you feel what I'm saying? And certain egos on the team and certain motherfuckers had too much pride. And so certain, you know what I'm saying, characteristics from player to player, they just didn't mesh well. You get what I'm saying? That's where you got to have motherfuckers that's going to keep everybody in check, keep everybody in line. You know what I'm saying? And then you guys decide that you want to make a sacrifice for the greater goal, and that's ultimately winning the championship. But what the Miami Heat display yesterday, that was pretty bad, man. Them niggas was down there finna throw niggas start chunking them, bro. Right then and there, in the middle of a fucking game. And these niggas are first place team. <clears throat> and I'm not surprised that Jimmy Butler and Udonis Haslam was in the middle of that squirmish. Because we know how strong, you know what I'm saying, uh, we know how strong of a demeanor that, you know, Udonis has on poses. Remember in the game, he got into it with, you know what I'm saying? I think, um, Dwight Howard and he, he's has gotten into it in the past when he was in his prime of his career, he has gotten into skirmishes and, you know what I'm saying? All court disagreements, which probably led to being held back a lot of yelling, maybe some pushing, you know what I'm saying? And some elbows being thrown. You feel me? Uh, like that. So that doesn't surprise me about his demeanor. And then also Jimmy Buckets. We already know how Jimmy is built. You know what I'm saying? We know his childhood. We know how he came up. We know all the adversity he had to go through. We know his story about in college. You know what I'm saying? We know about him being adopted and all the shits, right? So we already know how he get down. You know what I'm saying? From when he came up, working his way up. You know what I'm saying? Through that Chicago organization and earning playing time under Tom Thibodeau, which is very hard to do is earn playing time under Tom Thibodeau. You feel what I'm saying? So he then he started making a name for himself. And then all of a sudden he got traded. Then he went to Philly. You know what I'm saying? And shit didn't work out in Philly. Then he went to my fucking uh or then he went to Minnesota. That shit didn't work out. Then he went to Philly. That shit didn't work out. And we know why. See, Jimmy Butler is a winner, bro. And that's why Jimmy Butler was one of my favorite players. That's why he's one of my favorite players in the league. And I'm not never going to take up for a month ago if you're in the wrong and you're not bringing your A game every night. Jimmy Butler has, a, a, you know what I'm saying, accumulated some injuries throughout his career. But you can't say Jimmy Butler doesn't give effort when he's on the court. You can't say that Jimmy Butler is out there going to quit on his teammates. Jimmy Butler is stay like his passion. Jimmy Butler wants to win bad. You've seen what he did in that bubble. That boy Danner averaged a triple-double in the finals, which nobody could stop him. And I don't think nobody can stop Jimmy Butler, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Just his physicality and his mindset alone. He might not have all the handles and everything and all the shit that everybody got, but he knows how to score. He knows how to get to a spot and get his shot. You feel what I'm saying? He knows how to create contact once he gets into the paint. You feel what I'm saying? But... um. <clears throat> The simple fact that he got into it with Udonis Haslam. See, Udonis Haslam, he's that vet on the team that kind of like trying to be like Charles Oakley. Nigga, nigga, I'll beat your ass, nigga. You going to do what the fuck I say, nigga. So he's sort of kind of like their Charles Oakley, right? Even though he was garbage as fuck, though. You feel me? But the nigga is the nigga's Charles Oakley, and that's why they're keeping somebody like him around just for the culture of the squad. See, every squad needs like a, a, a Udonis Haslam, Charles Oakley type, a veteran. 
You have to have a seasoned veteran on the squad who ain't going to tolerate bullshit, who not going to allow you to slip at all, and who's going to hold you accountable when he feels like, you know what I'm saying, you're slipping and you're not bringing forth, you know what I'm saying, the effort. So maybe that's what he said to them in the midst of them losing. See, and then Jordan Poole was cooking. Jordan Poole, been, this is, I don't think this is about Jordan Poole making them shots over uh, Jimmy Butler. Jordan Poole made some difficult shots off the glass with the shot clock running down, bro. Jordan Poole is a fucking exceptional talent, bro. He's been averaging fucking 30, 25, 28 points a game his last, like, five games. You can't take nothing away from Jordan Poole. You know what I'm saying? They just, they just, the Warriors played harder, and they responded to what Draymond Green said the previous night when they lost in a post-game presser when they, after that loss to the Orlando Magic, and that was a challenge to his team. And that's the way that you have to go about your business. So if I was you, Donis Haslam, I would have said, I probably would have pulled him to the side or let the game play through, and then after the game, been like, check this out. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. We need to do this. Put it in a post-game presser or pull everybody together in the locker room. But when you show up your teammates and try to yoke a motherfucker and punk a motherfucker, these motherfuckers are grown men with families, children, you know what I'm saying, et cetera, businessmen. Like, so motherfucker going to take pride. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm a grown-ass man. Who the fuck you talking to? Nigga, I'll beat your ass. So you have to be careful on how assertive you want to be and aggressive you want to be. And the things that you say and the way you say them to your teammates if you're a veteran. Now, mind you, we should say, oh, I'm a veteran in this league, nigga. You should give me the respect because I put years in. I won championships here. You feel what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, Jimmy Butler like, nigga, but you was garbage as fuck, though, my nigga. I, I, I mean, I, I respect you because you were OG and everything that you did for the NBA and the Heat. But don't make it seem like, nigga, you were one of the greatest players in NBA history, nigga. So it's a respect level. You get what I'm saying? <clears throat> so for the, everybody else is scared of like Udonis has them. Jimmy Butler, nigga, not scared of none of the smoke. So if you come at that nigga wrong, nigga, he and he feel like, you know what I'm saying? Wait a minute, you getting at me a little bit wrong, nigga. Hold on. Just relax here. Nigga, calm your motherfucking nerves and lower your motherfucking tone, nigga. And then now nigga just disrespect him and say, Well, nigga, I'll beat your ass, nigga. And Jimmy Butler's like, nigga, what? Nigga, do it. You ain't gonna do nothing. And then that's what led to motherfuckers. Once he gave that bite back and challenged that nigga. And tested that nigga manhood and, and pulled that nigga whole card when he told that nigga, nigga, you ain't going to do nothing. Nigga, do it. I, I'm right here. I'll beat your ass. So he was responding to that. Jimmy Buckets was. <clears throat> Jimmy Buckets ain't going to cheat the game, bro. Jimmy but And that's the thing with the NBA, bro. It's The NBA tries to find and buck break these players to get them and control them to play a certain way. That's why when you see your greatest superstars ever, these niggas... Like, like now, not the niggas in the past, like, you know what I'm saying? But these niggas now, who niggas like, these niggas take nights off. They don't give effort. They don't play hard. They don't, you know what I'm saying, play up to the level and the standard that everyone expects them to and that they even hold themselves, you know what I'm saying, to the standard and, and a certain level of expectation when it comes to their play on the court. These niggas are lethargic. They, and they don't come out with enough energy. They're not great leaders. You couldn't say that about Michael Jordan. You never had to question if Michael Jordan or <clears throat> all the greatest players, the Larry Birds, you know what I'm saying, the Isaiah Thomases, the Michael Jordans, the motherfucking Allen Iversons, the motherfucking Kobe Bryants, uh, uh, the Akeem Elijahwans, Patrick Ewings, motherfucking um so on and so forth the dr j's the magic johnson's the kareem abdul jabbar's the james worthy's you never ever had to question if them niggas was gonna bring it night in and night out nigga they didn't take nights off where a nigga was passive oh man like what's wrong with jordan nigga that nigga playing with low energy why that nigga not shooting oh man this nigga throwing the game you couldn't say that about them niggas back in the day so in this day and age, it's all about buck breaking the player down, nigga, to control them and get them to do exactly what you want them to do because it's a lot of money invested on these games. Now, yesterday, Miami, he was favored by 10 points. The previous night, the Warriors were favored by nine. So those were two money lines in which you already know a lot of motherfuckers. And then when you have this thing called teaser, when you're making your bets, that means you can give a team six to, to down there eight points on a teaser and bring that spread either you know what I'm saying? Down or plus if you're taking the underdog. So mind you how much money was invested yesterday 
on a team losing, coming off a of back-to-back to Orlando, right? Then playing, losing to a team like Orlando. Then coming back and playing against a team like Miami. Then you had your superstars. You know what I'm saying? Then you had your fucking superstars who didn't even play. See, that spread would have been even lower had Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. After what Draymond Green said the previous night, after the loss to Orlando, that spread wouldn't have been no 10-point spread. The spread probably only would have been like five. So now you got a five-point spread all the way up to a 10-point spread. Nigga, that's the difference, you know what I'm saying, from probably like, damn, they're $150 to $200 difference in the spread. So now everybody really thought Miami was going to just run the Warriors out the gym since Orlando did it, right? And we know that Miami is a far better team. You know, the Warriors are playing on a back-to-back. You know what I'm saying? They have to travel. You feel what I'm saying? Even though it's still in the state of Florida, they still got to travel and they and they got to play on a back-to-back. Miami has rested. They, they didn't play the previous night. So they're rested, you know what I'm saying? Went through practice, shoot around and everything, and they're well prepared for a game. You feel what I'm saying? But you didn't get that same Miami team that played with a high level of intensity and, um, you know what I'm saying, and energy and defense. You know what I'm saying? It's like they allow the Warriors, you know what I'm saying, Damian Lee to come off the bench and score 20-some points. Damian Lee ain't scored 20-some points in Danner a year. You know what I'm saying? You can probably count on one finger how many times Damian Lee ever scored 21 points in his career, nigga, even dating back to college. So the level of frustration is like, nigga, come on. But you have to understand that these games be orchestrated, bro. When you get teams, nigga, that lose to teams they shouldn't lose to with their superstars, it's because these niggas aren't coming out with no energy. They're committing stupid ass turnovers. They're not playing up to the level of their expectations. They're playing down to the um, to the level, you know what I'm saying, of these mediocre teams. And then these teams end up beating them, bro. And the Lakers have been on that train all season, nigga. I'm not going to sit here and say the Lakers aren't good enough. The Lakers, they don't have team chemistry, in my opinion. But they have Hall of Fame type players. So it's inexplicable for you to lose to certain teams that they've lost to in the way that they've lost to these teams this year. You get what I'm saying? And it's all by design, bro, because the Lakers probably been favoring in most of the games that they didn't play this year still even with them losing so, but so you have to understand nigga how this shit works bro this shit is a business in vegas and money makes it dictate how these players play bro straight up jimmy butler is a winner nigga jimmy butler wants to win on all costs jimmy butler doesn't want to sell out and be the nigga and be like man damn damn i gotta play like this tonight fuck all right i'll toss the game these niggas be tossing the games you can't get Jimmy Butler to do that. And Jimmy Butler will buy back every time because Jimmy Butler is passionate about winning, bro. He wants to fucking win. You feel what I'm saying? <clears throat> and he wants to be the, a part of what's going on. So when they be running plays and shit for everybody else and these niggas ain't playing up to the level and the standards, Jimmy Butler like, wait a minute, nigga. If you want to win, nigga, get me to rock. I'll make sure everybody eats, bro. He did it in Minnesota. He led that Minnesota team. Him and Derrick Rose led that young an experienced Minnesota team, nigga, to the playoffs that year when they lost against Houston in the first round. Then, nigga, he led the Bulls to the playoffs, nigga. We have to keep it a hundred, bro. And then, nigga, he led Philly, nigga. He down there would have, they would have won a championship, nigga. If Jimmy Butler had stayed in Philly, but they chose motherfucking Tobias Harris over Jimmy Butler, nigga, they would have won a championship, bro. Like straight up, I believe that Jimmy Butler and Joel and B could have coexisted and they could have won a title. Because it's the mindset. See, Tobias Harris don't have the same mindset Jimmy Buckets got. And then Jimmy Buckets went to Miami, but Miami is like, they got a culture. Pat Riley and, and, and nigga, <clears throat> and the whole motherfucking coaching staff and organization then established that culture that they had, I guess, when LeBron was there. It's a certain level of expectation. When you come over there, nigga, you're going to bust your ass, you're going to work hard, and you're going to fall in line. See, Jimmy Butler ain't one of them motherfuckers who's willing to fall in line. That's why he's the scapegoat everywhere he goes. Everywhere Jimmy Buckets go, bro, he's the scapegoat. And he's the reason why the shit didn't work. Oh, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler just fall in line. He's not coachable. Nigga, that's the problem right there. When you want to fall, I don't want to fall in line. I just want to play basketball, nigga. And I'm going to compete at the highest level to do it. I don't want to be controlled to where you try to fit me in a certain box, nigga, and tell me when to play hard and when not to play hard, nigga, on certain nights. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? So now Jimmy Butler, it's going to be hard. 
See, the Miami Heat is going to move away from Jimmy Butler only because of the emergence of Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero can go get you 30 a game. You feel me? He's not going to play defense like Jimmy Butler. You feel me? So Tyler Hero is going to need, you know what I'm saying, other great players in order for them to win. But Tyler Hero is capable of scoring 30 games. Is he capable of carrying a team and a, and a franchise on his back? No, he's not built like that. It's a mindset. See, Jimmy Butler can go and carry you through a playoff series. You feel what I'm saying? Despite what everybody might say about, well, okay, well, why he didn't do it against Milwaukee? Yeah, because it, it was Milwaukee's time, bro. And Miami had injuries. You know what I'm saying? And inconsistent play. You feel me? And weak ass Trevor Reeves on 18. So you have to understand that it, these motherfuckers have pride, too many different egos, and sometimes they might not mesh well on one team. Especially, nigga, if you don't fall within, you know what I'm saying, that framework of um, shut up and dribble. You get what I'm saying? Do the shit my way. You feel me? These motherfuckers are play see this NBA is predicated on system basketball. If you're not gonna fall in line with the system and do the shit the way that these motherfuckers orchestrated it, then you become um you become an alien. You don't fit. You know what I'm saying? Now I can't market you because this shit always trickles and comes back full circle. It's all about the money, bro. The money is the reason why you see all of this shit happening today. Back in the days, it was about winning. These niggas got mad about winning, nigga. It was about winning. Now these niggas are getting mad because it's about money. And you niggas out here throwing basketball games. You feel me? You niggas out here just coming out, showing out, nigga. It's all about the bread, bro. Back in the day, these niggas wasn't getting paid nowhere close to what they making right now, nigga. Of course, everybody wanted to make money and everybody wanted to be paid and compensated fairly. You know what I'm saying? And evenly. But, nigga, they competed, bro. These niggas dove in the crowds, sacrificed their bodies, nigga. Hustled and sprinted, nigga, full court. Just to stop a nigga in transition. Not just take a foul just to give up a foul. A clear path. I'm going to just take the foul. Fuck it. I don't even want to play defense. There's so many. I just want to take the foul. I don't want to play D. We need to get back to the games where the games is 100, nigga. To, to, where, where the games is not 89, nigga, to 85. Nigga. Some games, nigga, 88 to 70, 75. You feel me? 79, nigga, to 73. We need to get back to them days because, nigga, that basketball was way more respected and entertaining. Now, these niggas, it's 180 to 100 and motherfucking 85. And that's in four quarters. And I'm like, how can you have good defensive rating and be one of the best teams if you're giving up 130 points? That shit don't make no sense. That just tells me that it's just all about offense. These niggas just running and gunning. These niggas ain't running no sets. They not playing no D. Everything is a motion. Nigga, pass, 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 shoot. It's no quick sets, no screen. Okay, we're going to get the mix match right here. We're going to exploit that every time and make the defense adjust. Every time. These niggas take nights off, nigga. These niggas take nights off. You should be excited, nigga, to play defense, bro. That shit should... Nigga, you should get goosebumps about wanting to play D, bro. And these niggas just don't have that type of mentality. So you're going to get the Miami Heat type situation on multiple teams, nigga. It just boiled over because you got two strong-willed people and one was not going to allow the other one to pretty much punk that nigga in front of everybody. I guess they try to control Jimmy Butler. See, I salute to Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler and like Kyrie pretty much, nigga. Fuck you, niggas. You ain't, what, nigga? You can't tell me what to do and how to do it, nigga. You think I don't know what to do and how to do this shit, bro? I helped almost win you a motherfucking NBA ring, nigga. You feel me? And the only reason, nigga, that that didn't happen because we already know this shit was control, nigga, for, for LeBron and him to win. Period, point, bang. But Jimmy Buck Butler was unstoppable in that finals. In that weak-ass bubbles finals. So y'all gotta understand, nigga, what's going on here. Like, you feel me? Allow Jimmy Butler to be Jimmy Butler, nigga, and everybody else, nigga, work around that. 
You need niggas with that type of mentality on your team, like a Jimmy Buckets, nigga. Strong will, determined, you know what I'm saying? Focus, get that shit out the mud, nigga. Stop trying to buck break the nigga, bro, and change him into somebody else. Because you're not going to win like that. The Miami Heat will not win, nigga. That dysfunction, nigga, kind of fucked up everything. I wouldn't be surprised if them niggas play their way out the first place, nigga, with like five games remaining. Because they going to try to be scared. They don't, probably don't want to, want that smoke with motherfucking uh, with the Nets. But that's the problem with the NBA. Why are we trying to avoid from playing motherfuckers? You should want that smoke. Nigga, if I'm on a team, nigga, I, I want the Nets in the first round. Whoever I am, I want the Nets, nigga. I'm going to just show you niggas that, nigga, we way better than them, and I'm a better player than them niggas. That's the type of mentality that we they have to exude, bro. But these niggas don't have that built in them. And it's so frustrating, nigga, because if I was a coach in the NBA, they won't allow a nigga like me to get around a team, bro, because I'm going to come up in there, and I ain't going to be on no bullshit. It's not going to be no agendas. I'm not following nobody's script, nigga. I'm all about winning, nigga. And I'm going to do it, nigga, by any means. We're going to get that shit out the mud, bro. I'm going to make sure you compete. I'm going to give you a scouting report on all the players, nigga. And we're going to work on our game so we can be the best player we can be, nigga, for our team. And, nigga, you're not taking nights off. If you take a night off and you play, nigga, like you don't want to play in the game, I'm yanking you for the rest of the game, nigga, and I'm sending your ass back to the locker room, nigga. I bet. Nigga, and if you don't like that, nigga, we chunking them. I don't give a fuck if you 6'8". I don't give a fuck if you 6'10". I don't give a fuck if you 7 feet, nigga. Oh, well, you just gonna have to put me in ice in a motherfucking intensive care, nigga. Straight up. Period. Point blank. But, nigga, I'm not gonna allow that bitch-ass shit, nigga, on my motherfucking squad, nigga. And that's from motherfucking, motherfucking, um, <clears throat> at it. Motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, youth ages and everything, nigga. We don't even getting down like that. Not on mine, nigga. I'm building men and kings and leaders, nigga. I'm not building a nigga to follow no system, bro. Period. It ain't no system followers over on my end, nigga. I don't fit within a system. Let me do what I do, nigga. You feel me? So that's just what it is, nigga. But salute to Jimmy Butler, bro. He's going to have to move on from Miami after this. They're going to have to go ahead and transition on the Tyler Hero, in my opinion. They're going to have to transition, nigga. Because these players, you can see everybody holding niggas back. You can see niggas looking a certain way. Like, damn, bro, that nigga really... Niggas was really looking at Jimmy Butler. And then Eric Spolster tried to get big and bad. We talking about Eric Spolster, a little ass, trying to... Oh, Miami Vice looking motherfucker trying to get bad with a motherfucker. If you don't sit your little motherfucking... Uh, what's that shit? Pete Escovito looking ass down. Nigga, you old Sheila E in a motherfucking band looking motherfucker fuck is he talking about, nigga? fuck is he gonna do? What you think? You the new Jeff Van Gunny, nigga? You trying to get all up in the mix, nigga? Sit your ass down and call on weak-ass plays you be calling, nigga. Jimmy Butler was like, nigga, what the fuck? Talk to this bitch-ass nigga over here getting at me like he gonna whip my ass, nigga. You think I'm gonna just allow that nigga to talk to me like that? Fuck no, nigga. And if you want some smoke, nigga, I'll whoop your motherfucking ass. So that's all that shit was. But they gonna have to move on from Jimmy Buckets. We'll take that nigga over in the Warriors, man. We'll take that nigga on Chicago. We'll take him back in Chicago, nigga. And the Lakers could for sure use a motherfucker with that type of mentality. But we gotta get rid of LeBron first. Them niggas ain't never gonna win shit, nigga, under LeBron and AD, bro. They gotta move on from them niggas. You feel me? Period. Point blank. So, that's just what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? But y'all niggas need to understand how this shit work, nigga. This shit is all about control, nigga. Power. And when you ain't falling in line, nigga, check this out. You don't fit in. So that's what it is, man. But, you know, let me know what y'all, let me know how y'all feel about it, man. You know what I'm saying? I heard p different people's perspectives on it, but, you know what I'm saying? Hit me up. Let me know. Uh, let's have some interesting dialogue. You feel me? So salute, man. The real one.